All right, guys, welcome back to Canon Only. We're continuing this as far as it'll go. <laughs> uh, cavalry only, rather. And, uh, of course, uh, Canon will be accepted. So I just wanted to kind of bring you up to date where I'm at right now. Um, I've been using these hybrid forces. So this one, for instance, has nine horse, seven infantry. This one has one horse, 18. This is more of he's just holding place here. My most recent attack was up to here. And of course, the very next thing I need to do is go in and take this double oil. That should really take the pressure off my resources. I may be able to tune uh, my energy resources all into the blue by then. That is the goal anyway. So I'm really loving this. Let me gather up uh, what I'll have there in just a moment after all these march up in there. I'll have 12 cavalry, 14 infantry. I'll probably send the cavalry over here. So 13 cavalry, 14 infantry to buffer that. And hopefully that'll be enough. Um, I mean, I'm sure it will. So the advantage here is I'm not attacking into his capital, which no doubt has a, no, doesn't have a defensive fortification. Yeah, but certainly this does not. So yeah, that might be what I'll do is just go ahead and take these two up here and it'll take me a while. But again, with the horses, maybe that'll expedite faster. Maybe I can just send a strike force of horses up here, maybe like a dozen or something. And then I can really start to kind of wrap around here. So let's see how we're doing victory points wise. Of course, victory points are based on the morale of your territories, um, how much development you have in terms of factories and buildings and uh, the size of your army and the number of territories you have. There's a lot of things that go into this reward points uh, scenario here, but it's a, it's a decent gauge. Um, I did play one game um, with a really good player called War Dog and he flew under the radar. I don't know why, but his victory points were low, but I was watching his territory expand and he had two oil fields. So I don't know how he did it, um, but he burst onto the scene and uh, I was so impressed with him. I allied myself with him and together um, we won the game for him. Um, at some point I recognized I was not going to win the game. It was the Mesopotamia game where you have to get four oil fields out of the seven. It's my favorite game mode to play. And uh, anyway, so you never know with these points. Sometimes they don't represent things accurately, but it's a decent metric. It's a decent way to look at this and go, okay, 40, uh, 50, 60, 60 points behind me. He was 70 points behind me. So he's, he's catching up a little bit um, back here. This guy has Francis stayed about the same. We've talked about the threat from France and he is now adjacent to me. So here and here um, he's slowly picking away here at uh, Italy here. So, um, you know, that, that's just something I need to keep my eye on. That's all. Um, it's not a giant threat or anything, but you know, I'll keep on streaming guys, maybe start bringing guys down into here now, because any minute now, France will be adjacent to this territory as well. And okay. I've got single pillbox. It's always nice to build a level two. Um, you know, once your defensive fortification is level two, they can no longer see inside and that's huge. Um, they don't know if there's one man in there or 50. So these 47 here are invisible. All he can see is a question mark. He has no idea. And if he's feeling his oats, he might attack in. And if you attack into a level three that has 47 guys in it, you're going to die. All right. So just checking this out, I've got a guy cooking here. Um, let me start up another cavalry here. Just going to keep at it. Got two new cavalries developed. So let's continue to build. Okay. Run out of fish there. So over here, I'm going to have to buy fish. Pew, pew. Thousand fish is all I need. And uh, sorry, I usually like to do this kind of house cleaning stuff off <clears throat> off air, but it doesn't hurt to just kind of see the daily routine here. So, and then got one building here, almost done. Just built one here, just built one here. Um, I, I'm looking at my resources. There's not much to sell. So I don't think I can develop any more um, cavalry this, this turn. So this is part of the game that I really try to walk a fine line. <clears throat> If you have a production facility, for instance, this square and this square, that's not, oh, this one is good. Okay. So really I just have one square that's not producing this round. I hate that. I think if you're playing this game right, you should have exactly that. You should walk that thin line between uh, having um, enough resources and having enough production. And if you're doing it right, you should be able to fill all of your production um, modules or whatever um, slots you should be able to be producing something everywhere. Anyway, it's not a terrible deal here because my investment is so low. You know, to produce 
cavalry, all I need is a level one workshop and a barracks. And a barracks kind of pays for itself anyway. You got the infantry coming in at a faster rate. So this is not terrible. You know, it's what I hate is if you have like a level four factory in an airfield and you should be building a bomber, but you can't. And it just lays empty. Um, again, there is an economy to this whole thing. You know, um, I do know, for instance, that um, successful businesses like to keep their inventory low. The less stuff you have in the back, the more quickly you're moving your product through the process, the more profit you're going to make. And so you try to streamline that that whole money flow thing. And the same thing is true here. The more resources you have just sitting here not being used, um, that's just not good. Um, I'm a big StarCraft fan, and I watch a lot of StarCraft casting. And uh, so, yeah, I'm a nerd big time. But uh, anyway, one of the things they, they see there is some of the noob StarCraft players will sit on, you know, just mountains of minerals. And that's just terrible. That's a terrible idea. If you have minerals and, you know, resources, you should be using them. Uh, just maximize your game. All right. So I don't know what's going on down here, but I'm just keeping a border intact with defensive fortifications. Doesn't look like much is going on down here, but I do know once I once I conquer Russia and at least spike it, I might just might just leave somebody here and here to defend to block, and then not worry about conquering all this. This is just way too. I'll get too far. I'm not even sure if I really want Archangel, but we'll see. Um, it does have another energy tile, which could help me, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, when I'm done up there, I'm going to loop back around and start to conquer back through here. This is AI and this is AI. So this is just a bunch of free cookies for me. And then I can consider what's going to happen with the Ottoman and continue my standoff against France. So um, game is going great. You know, cavalry only so far has been going well. Um, I do have a factory building here and a factory building here. So there will be cannon on the map shortly. Um, you know, you can't get through the middle game without cannon. That's just all there is to it. You know, I could build a hundred of these cavalry and they're just going to break to pieces against their fortifications while they rain down artillery fire from the backfield. So, um, anyway, okay. Thanks for checking in guys. Things are going rather well. Um, next time I come back to you, really, I anticipate having maybe both of these territories, you know, I don't want to waste too much of your time so you can travel into the future and see what's going on. So, uh, Next time, uh, next thing you click on should be maybe a couple days from here and a couple more territories conquered and all. We can see how that energy um, hopefully gets me in the blue here. It would be swell. All right, guys, thanks for checking in, and I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos.